Hi, welcome back to Frazzled Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzled Dad. Today I am going to be showing you how I finished up uh, one of my Ravage Star squads. Uh, you know, there was my previous video, I'll link to it, about learning how to paint them well so that I didn't get frustrated and I could make some good progress at a good level of quality. This is kind of another step along that. This is a squad of... 12 uh, figures no clear captain but a couple brutes uh, there's some interesting sculpts and again this is me learning how to do a good job of like slap chop um, figuring out that balance of getting big areas done and then being able to focus in and play around with a few things um, so yeah without further ado here we go So here I'm getting rolling. You can see that I've got a basic slap chop down on these. I haven't shown that. Uh, so I primed with a good old Rust-Oleum black primer, hit with a gray dry brush, then a bit of white to really make a few areas pop. I will also brush on some white on areas that I really want to make stand out, particular edges or whatnot. You'll also notice that I've got the bases done already. I was working on a different figure and it just worked out to get the bases done first. I don't generally do that, but in this case, that's what it was. So when working with the army painter, you know, any type of speed paint, contrast, whatever, uh, want to make sure it is well well shaken I'm using a fairly old crappy brush uh, I'm being careful on areas that I don't want the blue to go over something that adjacent that I'll be hitting with a different speed paint let me phrase it differently you want to take some care when you're using speed paint to not let the speed paint get into other areas that you'll be using another speed paint or contrast whatever but uh, if I'm working around an area where I'm going I know I'm going to be covering it with acrylics right so non contrasty speed paint things then I take a little bit less care because that opaque paint will cover over so this is part of me learning the areas where I can be a little sloppier and the areas where I have to be more careful. Um, also, I've found that on previous squads I've done, uh, I find myself missing areas around like the neck and not getting into the armor um, kind of crevices around the neck. And so I'm trying to focus on making sure I get that. Uh, and the rest of this is really just uh, continuing that work of getting this base of red down. Red of blue down. Now right here, I noticed that I'd gotten badly carried away and I'd let a bunch of that blue uh, wash out onto the robes. And the robes I'm going to be hitting with red. And so I'm just using a wet brush to kind of flood the area where I goofed. And then a paper towel to pick up the excess and a uh, quick recovery of my goof. So a bit of time lapse here or time compression just to get through all of this. Now 
Now I'm on to working with bright red, which I really like for the cloaks. Um, I think it's just, it, yeah, I love the color. works really well here. Uh, as I move on through models, I'll find that I have different orders of painting uh, cloaks and the little side trim. Uh, it works easier if I start out on the lower levels and then move to the outer levels. Um, but here I hadn't sussed that out yet uh, and had forgotten it from earlier squads. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, just get the paint on the model, be thoughtful, be mindful, and alter as you figure out things between different minis. Earlier on, I think I mentioned uh, the Army Painter Nuclear Sunrise, and actually I, this time around for this squad, decided to give Pro Acryl's Transparent Orange a try. I've struggled on places to find uh, good uses for them um, and thought I'd give a try here, and it's turned out pretty well. It's a little more opaque a little better coverage than the nuclear sunrise and i like the color so yeah i'm working on it for the uh, front whatever that is um and then uh several of the figures have uh, these little swatches on hips that uh, grenades or something else is attached to so i'm hitting all of those Here I'm using P3's Thamar Black. That's not Thanos Black. And uh, just getting some of that out, I'm using a green stuff, nice synthetic brush. And here I'm just starting to blacken down things like belts and grenades and uh, some of the pouches that are on the various figures. Just getting them covered up with a basic black. I'll come back in later with some gray and do some edge highlighting and give them some texture, but this is just basic coverage here. I'm also getting the gloves uh, down with some black. Now I'm starting to work on getting um, some color on some of the guns. And so I use a mixture of Vallejo Arctic Blue and uh, um, a black metallic. Um, and I find that works really well for giving some interesting color to various metal parts. I like the Arctic Blue. Sometimes it's a little bit too strong, though. I'm mixing in some 70 997 silver. Um, 
because I wanted it to be a little brighter. It turns out I actually mixed too much of that in. I would have been better just leaving the black metallic because uh, later on I had to hit everything with a little bit of heavy null oil. Um, and then I just wasn't able to highlight up as much. So, uh, yeah, this was a mistake. Anyway, you know, stuff's fixable, right? It's just paint and plastic. Um, but this, you know, Vallejo's paints go on really, really well generally. I have I struggle with the gold, but um, in this particular use case, uh, this stuff goes on really well. Now for the big brute here, for the cable that goes from his power pack down to the gun, I like using that full on metallic blue and then I come back and highlight with some silver later, but I think that approach works really well. In here, I'm just comparing to uh, a prototype I did as the first one out of all the squad. Here, I'm starting to work with Vallejo Gold and Green Stuff World's Antique Gold Pigment Powder. By all means, please go watch Vince Venturella's uh, Hobby Cheats segment on uh, painting with gold. I'll put a link. I don't go his full-blown recipe. This is just kind of my hack at it. Uh, I was experimenting around here doing this in uh, pots. And later on, I actually switched to using Pro Acryl with the Green Stuff World pigment powder and having that on my wet palette. And I was getting much better flow. Uh, getting good detailing on all of these figures and mine isn't great uh, I'm struggling with brush control throughout this process getting good detailing means getting the consistency of the paint right also frequently wash your brush um, that gold pigment powder uh, just even with gold paint uh, met metallic paints I find it clogs up brushes quickly dear God please do not use your fancy uh, sable brushes use a good synthetic rinse it regularly I find it also helps to keep the brush damp so there's a lot of water in the barrel of the brush the body um, just be you know careful work diligently I would recommend you avoid trying something like thinners or flow improvers the times that I've tried those with Vallejo and I think also with Pro Acryl, it actually turned them into gloopy, terrible messes. So uh, there's a lot of great detail to pick out here. Be careful, be mindful about what you decide to choose uh, to paint. And just, you know, take it slow and get after it. The results can be terrific. So here I'm starting to work on some fun stuff, which is getting some glowy things 
painted up. So I'm taking models with, uh, you know, plasma-ish guns. In this case, this is the second big brute in this squad. Uh, and I'm using a mix of Vallejo white. Really, any white will do just fine. Uh, some flow improver. And I'm doing my initial blocking of what are going to be the glowy areas. I'm also going to change my process a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be playing around with an airbrush uh, to see how I can do with uh, getting that in place. So yeah, this is just a matter of working through each of the models. The flow improver helps uh, get a thinner coat in. It, it obviously comes off the brush a little better. Um, so this will be a multi-stage process to get glowy things done here. While I was waiting on that white for the glowy things to dry and set up, I decided I'd paint the helmets. So here I'm using P3 Scorn Red, which is just a lovely uh, red color. Uh, I like the look of it. It's a little darker, um, and uh, it takes well with mixing some orange to get some highlight colors. Uh, if you don't know with red, Highlighting can be a little tricky. You don't want to mix in white, at least in my experience, because then it turns pink and it looks weird. So using some yellow or an orange or a different uh, color of red works really well. But here I've just got kind of a big, uh, one of my sloppy synthetics, and I'm just carefully getting paint in. Um, this synthetic is nice because it holds a lot of paint. That's a pretty big size. Also, uh, it's an older synthetic. The tip is going a little weird. It's got a kink. But I can actually use that kink carefully to get into some nooks and crannies down around the base because uh, it's almost a little bit of an angle. So, you know, just because you got a crappy brush, uh, sometimes you can actually level leverage whatever is goofy there. So... You know, I uh, goofed, um, got a little paint on the gun, just wipe it off and carry on. A quick interlude here to clean off a couple of my brushes. Um, the Green Stuff World, the smaller brush I'd been using with the metallics and wanted to get it clean. The larger, junky synthetic um, was just getting a little fussy and the tip was splitting out more than I expected. So, you know, take care of your tools. Just a quick little interlude there. Now it's time to do some highlighting. So I've mixed in some of the Pro Acryl uh, orange with that Scorn Red, and now I'm just starting to do some edge highlighting on some of the details, as well as just hit a bit of the surface volume. Um, I play around with mixing a little more orange in. Uh, when I got the first mix in, I didn't like the, there wasn't enough contrast, so just pull in a little more orange to the mix, and uh, away you go. So, you know, just highlighting, catching some volumes, catching some of the mini details on the helmets, and getting some of that in place.
more fun stuff, getting glowy eyes in. So I've already put a base in each of the eyes using <clears throat> white mixed with a lot of flow improver. Uh, here I'm using the golden fluorescence. I find I don't need flow improver with these because these come off the brush really well. Uh, here I've got a really nice fine tip uh, brush from Squidmar. I'm using my uh, sexy eye magnifier things and you might pay attention to how I'm bracing my hands very carefully and uh, really trying to rest the model so there's as little movement as possible. Uh, eyes are hard even when you're not like painting actual eyes but just glowy eyes. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, learn a few tricks like a good, a decent brush with a good tip. Uh, flow improver is a big help. And yeah, just practice. Here I'm getting the initial coat of fluorescent uh, down on the guns. I'll be going out to the garage and airbrushing a little uh, more on there. I'll show that a bit later. But this is just laying down uh, the basic colors here. So I'm using the golden green and pink. Here's a quick little fly through of me working on getting the horns on the helmets and also some of the backpacks. It's just a matter of taking and starting with Xandri dust, doing a bit of highlighting on each of the bony things with Tyrant Skull, and then tying everything together with Agrax Earthshade, which really helps. Uh, so it's a shading wash. It really helps pick out some of the texture in the various horns and just make a nice bit of transition. Now we get into some real fun. Uh, I'm out at my spray station out in the garage and we're going to start working on uh, getting the glowy stuff a little more glowy. So I'm using Liquitex white ink, a little tiny bit of... Now I'm out in the garage and going to get to working on some fun stuff. I'm using Liquitex white ink. Uh, I'm using a bit of thinner. I think I've got this diluted, maybe one to one. I want a really thin, um, liquid, uh, really thin spray coming out. I'm using my Harder Steenbeck Kiev Infinity. It's really precise. Uh, I'm also, you can see, I'm blocking things off a bit with. Uh, aluminum foil to make sure I don't get any overspray, but frankly, the H&S is so awesome. Even with the um, 
medium-sized tip on it that I can get really precise. And what I'm trying to do is get just a little bit more shading with the white ink and that's so that I extend out that area of that glow a little past the coils. I don't want to make it crazy but I'm just trying to get a little bit of fuzz or light spray around the areas of the coil. Coils. Now it's a matter of coming in with the fluorescent uh, paints and again light spray trying to extend that glowy effect. Um, the pink is okay. Uh, I think the next squad that I do I'll use a darker color to get a more vibrant glow but just careful work here and you know adding a little more spray uh, to get that glow effect out. Okay, I'm back inside at the desk, and this is the final bit of the glowy stuff here. I'm using white ink, and I'm playing around with Flow Improver. Um, this is almost the same notion as a pin wash. I want to get into the spaces between the coils with that brilliant white, and then I'll be touching over the actual coil, the ridges, if you will, with the straight fluorescent paint and the point is to make a great contrast that pops. And that's the final stages of getting these guns to look like they do. Um, like I said I'd probably choose next time a little more vibrant color but I was happy with the process here. Oof, so this is almost pushing a half hour and I'm not to even the grand reveal yet. This video shows you almost soup to nuts me taking an entire squad through my current process and what I'm learning and adapting to. Slap Chop with these very detailed pieces lets me get past 80% of that difficult work and then focus in on some stuff that I like playing around with. The gold detailing, even though I wasn't all that happy with the outcome of it for this particular squad. Um, the weapons effects which were fun and I'm learning and I know next time I'm going to adapt a couple things. But again, using speed or contrast, whatever types of technical paints uh, lets you quickly slap chop and move on, big win. Uh, if you found this video uh, helpful or interesting, please give me a thumbs up. By all means, kindly subscribe to it. That way you'll get notifications when future video drops. And if you found something particularly interesting or you do something differently, let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested to hear how other folks are approaching their work. So until next time, please remember, be kind, <clears throat> experiment, learn things. At the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic. Until next time, goodbye.